Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Mitsubishi Eclipse. Just did the timing belt job on it about a week ago. Fixed the idle problem, EGR problem. The customer said it runs fantastic. More power, better acceleration. Now, different complaint is it starts, runs, and then starts to stall out. Well, let's see what's going on. Seems to be doing okay. Runs fine. Let's try again. What I saw was the brake and the positive battery light were flickering and then it stalled out. Want to reproduce it? Right there. See that? Brake and alternator lights come on. It's not happy. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Very cool. Put it in reverse. Put it in drive. Put it in neutral. Put it in park. Hmm. So intermittent, but why those two lights? I think we should start there. Let's uh, open up the hood, do a quick visual inspection on the harnesses and stuff. But what would make the car actually stall out and turn those lights on? Some kind of ground issue, perhaps? Did we touch something during the timing belt job? I mean, we did take off the alternator to get to the, you know, the brackets and stuff, but it's a very interesting uh, symptom. Let's do a quick wiggle check here. This ground terminal isn't the tightest, but ah. I hate wiggling stuff and then not doing measurements, but it's tempting, isn't it? <laughs> At least want to take a look at the wiring diagram. See what controls the brake and alternator warning lights. So I pulled up some diagrams. <clears throat> what could cause this brake and indicator light, charge indicator light to turn on at the same time? So the, there's a diode between them. So if you know, this is the power side of those bulbs. It's fed by 52. And 52 is a black and white multi-purpose fuse. Okay, now, the only way those bulbs could light at the same time is if the charge indicator bulb, pin 49, is grounded. 49 goes to our starting and charging system. So next diagram, right here, there's the multi-purpose fuse, charge indicator, it goes right to the alternator. Now, if the terminal on the battery, these black and yellow wires, left side of engine, near battery, if that terminal was loose and the engine was not getting a good ground in terms of the alternator could that light turn on because the circuitry in here is confused I think yes would the car stall 
well if there's no good engine ground yes the car could absolutely stall um, ignition coils uh, you know the computer everything is related so I think we're on the right track let's look take a close look at this ground layout We got one cable here. There's a crimp. There's a body that's just tied to there, I guess. Is that, is that the body ground? We got a whole bunch of grounds right here. And if this is not doing well, and I assume this goes down to our engine. So let's try to get the car to act up. Um, we could put a voltmeter on, you know, reference at the battery ground, and put in the other lead on the cable so voltage drop between the engine and the ba and the battery itself, and see if uh, that could cause a problem. So we're cruising with the top down. Car runs beautifully. I think it was just loose uh, negative battery terminal. It looks like it's been replaced before, and that nut that holds the, the wire down just wasn't as tight as it should be. At this point, give it back to the customer and uh, let it go. But otherwise, it runs perfect. Ooh, Gentlemen's Club. I wonder if they're open during the, the pandemic. <laughs> I wonder if they do a social distancing there. Hmm. Up the hill. Mitsubishi Power, come on. Flooring it. It's alright. charge for this call. I mean, the car was just at the shop. It wasn't a hard problem. They're going to bring it back for other work. It was on the way. Maybe we'll just let this one slide, eh? <laughs> well, if it acts up again, we'll turn the camera back on, but thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, one last experiment here. <clears throat> Let's start up the car. We'll turn the lights on. Increase the load on that alternator. And see what happens when we just take off, momentarily loosen up the connection on this negative battery cable. The car keeps running. Oh, oh, oh. Is it doing its thing? Did the brake and warning alternator lights come on? We're at 13 volts. But if we make and break contact, you can see what happens. The alternator is like loaded and unloaded. And I think, I think that would cause this issue. All right, here we go. Car's running. Do you guys see anything? Mm -hmm. 
So the Mitsubishi Clips made it to my shop. It's here for an air conditioning hose replacement and I'm gonna try to diagnose this intermittent battery light stumbling problem. Very strange issue. So since the battery lights only can only be turned on by the alternator or the voltage regulator inside the alternator, we're gonna focus on this. We got four channels, four control wires right there. So let's look up some service info on this thing and start the car up, roll the scope and see what drops out or if there's anything abnormal. All right, wiring diagram. So this is the redrawn generator, the big battery positive post. Those wires go through a big fusible link, 120 amp, right to the battery. Now the four control wires. First one and fourth one, one and four, black and red, yellow and black, go to our powertrain control module. So this alternator is controlled by the PCM, it looks like. Third wire, white and green, controls our charge indicator bulb. So this voltage should be high when the car is running and we're seeing if this light flickers, this voltage should be dropping for, for whatever reason. So I want to see if there's anything going on on the controls to make this voltage drop or to make the regulator turn on the warning light. And the second wire here, red and white, comes from a dedicated fuse 7, hot at all times, so that's like the sense circuit. Um, I also printed up the OE diagrams. It gives you a little more information on what's inside the engine computer. So let's go from left to right here. There's the big battery post. There's our sense fuse. So we have one lead on there. Four and one is the FR and G terminals. And you can see a little circuitry in here. FR, five volt reference, but in the TSB it says it's supposed to be 12 volts. But this is a sense circuit. So this, it's like a little voltmeter. Whenever this, whenever there's a little current going into this board, the FR terminal sense will go down. And then the G terminal, looks like there's a transistor here and that pulls it to ground. There's a little arrow here. What is that? Is that field control? I, th I think it might be. <laughs> But there's no real clear description in the service data. And there's our warning light. So the only thing I found here in terms of description and operation, there's a schematic operation. Rotation of excited field coil generates AC voltage. Alternating current is rectified through diodes. Average output voltage fluctuates slightly. When the ignition switch is turned on, the current flows in the field coil and initial excitation of the field coil occurs. When the stator coil begins to generate power after the engine started, the field coil is excited by the output current of the stator coil. Okay, so this is very interesting. The generator output voltage rises, the field current increases, and it falls as the field current decreases. Yep, when the battery positive voltage S voltage reaches a regulated 14.4 the field current is cut off when the battery voltage drops below the regulated voltage voltage regulator regulates the output voltage to a constant level um, and then in connector views for the engine computer says generator G terminal you do these things and you expect voltage rises by 0 0.2 to 3.5 so you turn on all these accessories and the voltage should rise hmm okay I don't know why and they don't tell you what the actual terminal does but we have a scope on there so we'll see if that's true FR terminal 
you do the same thing as turn some loads on and the voltage drops. Does that make any sense? It doesn't tell you any value, it just says voltage drops. So, again, you expect to see 12 volts on there. <laughs> uh, but this is uh, not the best description and operation here in terms of testing. There's one service bulletin, FR term terminal voltage revision. It says, beginning with 97 model year, the pull-up voltage of the alternator FR terminal was changed from 5 to 12 volts. The circuit diagrams and effective service manuals incorrectly indicate 5 volts at the alternator. Disregard this when using the diagrams. Okay. Some MFI diagnosis procedures include checking the voltage at the alternator FR terminal. The correct voltage reading between the alternator FR terminal and ground should be battery voltage 12 volts. This is incorrectly specified in these vehicles. Okay, so we should see 12 volts on there instead of 5, but... It just says voltage drops. Alright, so let's roll the scope and... Hopefully get the car to act up. If that light flickers on that L terminal, we'll see, hopefully, something interesting. Well, here's what we have so far. Our sense voltage on the red trace is about 14 volts. The green is the light, warning light. It's also high, above 12 volts, so our light is not turning on. Yellow and blue are the wires that go to the engine computer. So you can see the wire in blue right now is 5.8 volts and the yellow is some kind of duty cycle. So let's turn on the lights, see if anything changes. Lights on, blower on. Okay, check that out. The blue definitely changed, but we're not seeing any dropouts yet. Well, I can't really get this car to act up on its own, so I'm gonna do a little tap test on the alternator and see if that green trace drops at all. Okay. So these little dropouts, you can see something happens right there, and the green trace indeed does drop out. So at this point, I'm suspecting the alternator voltage regulator circuitry is failing. I wish I could actually get the warning lights to come on on their own. It's... Like what happens right there? Ugh. So before throwing an alternator on this, do a visual inspection of the connector, the female and the male side. The pins look okay, but there's like this black sludge in that connector. Could that be actually shorting out the pins and causing a problem? I think I think maybe, because this is a very intermittent problem, and if the regulator failed, we would have seen it. You know, it would have failed for good. But after messing with this connector, the problem seems to have gotten better. So I'm going to blow that out, clean that out, and let the customer take the car back and if it doesn't act up for let's say a week then we can charge them one hour diagnostic fee for that uh, alternator 
you know, problem. Um, so I'm not going to say replace the alternator just yet. Let's just clean the connector, wait and see. I'm not going to charge them for it because, you know, we didn't really prove anything. We're just suspecting that this is a problem. If this doesn't fix it, if the connector of the pins are tight and the connectors are clean, then, yeah, it'll need an alternator. All right, so we blew out the connector with compressed air. It looks much better. And I put a little dielectric grease on the female side here and did a drag test with the AES Wave Terminal Kit. The pins are nice and tight. So let's plug it back in. Start up the car. Make sure there's no issues. I almost think that that was the problem all all along. So we'll uh, we'll do an update in one week. Hopefully, it's no parts required fix. Uh oh. So the car sat here overnight. We fixed the alternator yesterday, or the connector. It rained overnight. Now, crank, no start. Oh man, this car does not want to leave the shop. <laughs> I was gonna take my wife to breakfast in it. And it fires up. Unbelievable. And we had a no com. Let's try again. Still a no com. So let's try OBD2 mode. Well, we're in OBD2 mode. Read fault code. Mitsubishi Generator FR terminal circuit How about that? No check engine light Let me clear this out Yes Read fault code That's probably when we ran it unplugged yesterday. No fault code. Okay. Charging fine. So I have no idea why that happened except for if the car was wet, moisture got in somewhere, caused the problem. So I'm gonna tell the customer about this. Again, not separate problem, once again. <laughs> we never had a crank no star before in this thing. So just you have to be upfront, honest with your customer. Tell them that this morning the car did not want to start, and then it started and everything was perfect. And then leave it up to them, whatever they want to do. So, a little bonus footage, quick update. We'll see where this goes. See you guys next time. Bye bye. So, I managed to recreate the crank no start. Just sprayed the distributor area with water, and the thing stalled out and now it's going to be crank no start boom <laughs> and uh, you know communication is still good no trouble code set there you go so we'll tell the customer that you know he said oh I just put on uh, whatever new ignition cap or wires and plugs well whatever he put on was not up to the task maybe that cap is like 
eBay or whatever the cheapest thing you can get on Rock Auto. Um, and after, like that is a classic, after a rainy, humid night, if your car doesn't start and it's run fine before, that's what you're looking for. Secondary ignition if, uh, if your car is equipped with a distributor, plugs and wires. So, makes me feel better. Wasn't my fault. <laughs> again, it's not setting the alternator code again. Um, just have to dry it out and tell them, tell them uh, I don't know, get a new cap for it, OEM. But, thanks all for watching. Another good case study here. Multiple problems. Customers like, I just brought it over for a timing belt. Why is it not run right now? So I kind of felt a little under the gun here to say, hey, let's diagnose it. I'm not going to charge you for it. But now um, we'll tell them the news and um, that'll be that. Thanks so So a little bonus footage. I sprayed the entire distributor with WD-40 because the customer is going to pick up the car in the morning and if it doesn't start, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> and I swear this stuff is magic because the car fired right up even after the distributor soaked in water. <laughs> Boom. Sweet. So there's a tip. If your car doesn't start after a rainy morning, WD-40 on the distributor, boom, fixed. But he's going to need to redo that.